All right. Hi, Natalie. Hey, Coach Corey. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm great. Good. And um, does it say record in the bottom of your screen that we're yes, recording? Perfect. Mm -hmm. We're up there. Well, um, Nat, thanks for taking a little time from Texas and uh, in for all your, uh, you know, studying online and everything. I, you know, I didn't, we, I didn't go over this in advance, but um, before we get into sort of your last couple of months, um, you know, how is online school going? Um, it's been great, honestly. Um, I love spending time home with my mom and my sister um but online learning has been really different but um i've been enjoying it sometimes i get like a headache at the end of the day but other than that it's been good um for me i like i really like um pausing and like mm -hmm. taking my time and learning and like taking all my perfect notes and stuff so it's been really helpful so um what was your gpa fall quarter i'm asking you all these questions i didn't prep you for Yes, um, I don't know about fall, but winter I was 3.7 something, 7.6. Yeah, and I think you were 3.8 something in fall. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> so I guess what I'm saying is it's working. Whatever you're doing, keep doing it. Uh, and, you know, were, were you even that good of a, I mean, you've always been a good student, but um, here you go to one of the elite institutions in the entire country, and you're an even better student than you were at Baylor. Is that correct? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> so what, what have you attributed that to? I mean, you know, it got harder and you got better. So how, how, did, how did you do that? Um, for me, mentally, I feel like, I mean, the program has a big part of how, like, my mental has changed. I realized how important my academic side um, of my college experience is um, going forward into my future. Um, I never really took academics as seriously as I do now um, at my other at throughout high school and also at Baylor but once I got to UCLA I realized what a great opportunity I had to excel in different parts of my life um, and I really told myself that I really needed to focus on the academic side because who knows I mean having a degree at UCLA can take me anywhere so yeah. I just wanted to excel in that part as well. Well I'd say you're excelling times like on steroids you know so <laughs> Um, I could, I could focus really, really hard and I'm not sure I would have ever gotten a 3.8 something, 3.7 something. I mean, you're just doing phenomenally well. So congratulations for that. Um, you. you know, we're, we're recording this zoom call, um, because we want to give, um, a picture to our donors. I mean, you actually just sp spoke. Do you have your glasses around by chance? I do. <laughs> yeah, so, okay. So, yes. so she had just said, those are blue light glasses. Oh, those are yes. very fashionable, Natalie. Thank yes, you. yes. So, but um, our donors bought those for our team um, through our foundation account because you guys were on your screens all day long and it was, it's, it has the potential to give headaches uh, also to affect your sleep. And so this was a way that we could meet the need um, of you all because you are doing uh, such a great job in taking your academics seriously. But I mean, you're on screens, what, eight hours a day? Yeah, like I'm just sitting at this spot like the whole day mm -hmm. um, and the first week I was getting a lot of like little headaches and stuff and I like couldn't really focus on my schoolwork. But um, once I got these, it's been so helpful and like I don't, I can just, I don't want to, but I can just sit here and look yeah. at my screen the whole day. So yeah, That's I'm awesome. really thankful for these. Yeah. Well, we're getting them um, for the staff now too, because uh, we think that you guys have made a big difference. You can take them <laughs> off because I know you don't want to do them the whole time. <laughs> So, um, but that's just another way that, uh, you know, our, our Bruin elite helps us meet the needs of our student athletes and they've just have been available to us at every turn. Um, but we wanted to spend a special time, um, uh, you know, sharing your story because not only would it have not happened without them, but it is literally, would you say it's fair to say this has been sort of a life changing couple of months for you in, in telling your story? Absolutely. I would have never had, I don't think I would have had this opportunity to um, tell my story and also my mom's in such a beautiful way and such mm -hmm. a creative way without mm -hmm. the help of everyone at Bruin Elite and also the staff. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm going to back up, you know, way back when we recruited you the first time. I remember being in your home visit uh, and your mom cooking, uh, you know, traditional Chinese dishes and um, mm -hmm. Shannon being scared to uh, to, to eat anything because she's such a big eater. I think I ate uh, both helpings. And um, 
but just, you know, being at your home and, and getting to know your family and seeing what an amazing um, story you had as a Chinese woman and how deeply entrenched that culture was. Um, you know, but I just, I don't even know if you guys were talking about it as much at that point. Um, but I mean, fast forward two more years, we, you, you go to Baylor, we have a wonderful opportunity to bring you back to our family after two years. And I remember you were in my player group that first year. And we, so we would meet every week and your word for the year was cleanse. I remember that, but through the cleansing, I think you were more deeply discovering, uh, how much your background means, you know? And so I remember one of our meetings, I asked you, so tell me one of our core values as a program is being a lifestyle giver. And um, I asked you, what do you think your service legacy, what you want it to be? What, how do you want to be uh, a lifestyle giver that's uniquely gifted to you? And uh, why don't you share a little bit about how you answered that? Yeah, uh, well, I mean, since coming to UCLA and uh, spending time with everyone, on campus and stuff, um, I really, it's really opens my eyes to all the opportunities and all the things that I can do because of my platform as a student athlete. And then also, I mean, the coaches and my teammates have like told me how kind of special my situation is um, because I think the stat was in 2018, there was 1% um, Asian American woman playing in division one basketball. And so I feel like I really took to heart that stat and I realized how special the platform I have um, for the Asian American community is. Um, and so, and then Coach Corey, you always say like, who are we influencing and what are we giving? And so I really made it a point to myself that since there's no one else that looks like me um, in like the athlete world, um, basketball specifically, I wanted to be that person that little girls and boys could look up to Asian little boys and, and of all races actually mm -hmm. can look up to and see that oh like you can dream big dreams and you can if you're really passionate about something you can go pursue it it doesn't matter um like the stereotypes or the barriers you face if you really want to pursue something you you can yeah well and you have you know I think about this year specifically on our Asian American Heritage Night that we had surrounding the game. I can't, I'm just blanking out. Who did we play that night? You remember? I think it was one of the Washingtons. I think it was, you're right. I think it was either mm -hmm. Washington or, no, it was Was Washington or Washington State. I can't remember one, mm -hmm. but I think you're right. Yeah. And, um, and I remember going, oh, no, it was Washington um, State, I think, because it was, or Washington, because it was the overtimes. And it was Friday night, and, and it was all, and so I was wondering if there was going to be anyone left up top to uh, ask for your autograph after. And I remember thinking to myself, ah, oh, you know, I, I, this is such a missed opportunity. I know, I know Natalie was so looking forward to um, seeing these faces and investing in them. And, um, and then I, you know, little did I know, uh, we get done with the um, post game talk and media and you go up there and the line is all the way around the concourse still waiting uh, to get your autograph and for you to have contact, uh, you know, tell, talk to, about, talk about that night and what that meant to you and, and just sort of how that affected, um, you know, how your platform was being used. Yeah. Uh, well, shout out to Dana from marketing for getting all that set up. Um, I knew it was like the first time that we've ever kind of done something for Asian American heritage. So I'm really appreciative for all the hard work that she put in. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, I mean, I, that night was just so special for me. To be honest, I was really nervous. I was just, I, don't, I usually get kind of nervous, but for that game, I was extremely nervous. Cause I, I mean, I didn't want to let, I know a lot of the little um, Asian boys and girls hadn't really seen me play basketball before and I didn't want to let them down, but I'm glad that we came out with the win. Um, and so I was just, that whole night meant so much to me because I just want little kids to realize that this is a thing that they can do and that I'm living proof that you can um, crash through barriers and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I'm mm -hmm. so glad that they had the opportunity um, and just feel special about their heritage and where they come from and that they do like mean a huge thing in the sports world. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, that night meant a lot to me. Yeah. And, just being able to interact with, they're so cute. Mm -hmm. oh, oh my gosh. And then, yeah, so um, they're just so nice. And I'm just so glad that I get to have this platform to influence these amazing, yeah. beautiful 
little people. <laughs> well, it was interesting to me, yeah. Nat. It was like, it was a reminder of how needed it was because, you know, if they were willing to stay way later, you know, past, and you, ha you actually ended up having a good game. So you were in media and you did all these things and they were still willing to wait. Um, I think that says so much about how your voice is needed and how people are really looking for somebody to inspire them, to give them hope, um, to give them a roadmap of what is possible and how to go about doing it. So, you know, I think we went, all went away from that game going, wow, not only was this really great for Natalie's heart and, and her opportunity to live out her dream and her service legacy, but it's also um, a great opportunity for us as a program to uh, influence uh, and impact people because there was an obvious need there. And so that really hit me when I watched that. Um, and then, so then we fast forward a little bit from there and, um, you know, Luke Grigg, as uh, you and I both know, has been involved in our program. He's a graduate of the UCLA Film School and he was a video intern for us. And um, actually because of the experiences he got with us, he had the opportunity to start his own production company. And I remember he's been doing about two to three features for us for our donors benefit um, to have a little background. He's been, since he started his own production company, I think that he's been doing it three years now, we've tried to hire him as a consultant to do two to three special features for us per year. And, and, and again, we pay for that out of our foundation account, out of our Bruin Elite, which you all um, allow us to be able to provide some of these experiences. And so I sat down with Luke and this year and said, okay, so what are you passionate about? What story are you passionate about telling? Um, you know, two years ago, he did what he called a UCLA anthem, where he tried to make come alive what our philosophy is, what makes, um, you know, our uncommon vision um, you know, unique, uh, what makes it transformational, and he did a spectacular job. Um, and it's been very, very important in recruiting to be able to have that anthem video to really encapsulate uh, what, what makes our program uncommon. But this time we sat down, we said, Luke, you know, what, what's the most important story we need to tell? And I think a little bit as a result of that Asian American night and how we saw that come about, uh, he was like, we have to tell Natalie's story. I mean, it's gotta be Natalie. And, uh, and he said, you know, I'd like to, if it'd be okay, I, um, Karen, who's also on our staff, and I, we'd like to take Natalie to dinner and have her really talk about what that's like. And so, um, and so that's how it started. But talk about that first dinner. So you go to dinner with Luke and Karen, and you're like, did you know what to expect? I mean, what did you talk about? Tell us about that dinner. Yeah, so Karen texted me um, and she was just like, hey, do you want to go get some dinner this week with me and Luke? And I said, absolutely. Like, I had no idea what, I was just like, oh, friends, great. I love <laughs> food. So uh, we all went and we like, we just sat, we caught up because I hadn't seen Luke in a while, but um, we had been friends, we were, we've been friends. So we were just catching up um, and then all like, they're like, okay, so we have a question for you. And I'm like, huh? And then Luke was like, wait, Karen, you didn't tell her? And she was like, no. And she's, Luke was like, oh, so you just think that we're just eating together? I was like, yeah. Um, but he um, introduced me to the idea, and I was, I was really shocked because I was like, do I have enough to mm -hmm. make a documentary? <laughs> Very, mm -hmm. Like, did I have enough, like, stuff? And then he was just, he really assured me, and, like, he just made me really excited about this project, and I'm just so grateful for his, um, his creativity and his the way he sees things it's just so beautiful and like yeah. the way he's told my story it's amazing well and it was interesting uh you know to our our wonderful supporters you know um i think about the privilege it is to be able to go to a young woman like natalie and say okay uh what do you want to be able to accomplish uh basketball wise and you know uh it, not everything is perfect but you know you're going to have opportunities to to push yourself and reach your potential okay now what do you want to be able to accomplish academically? And obviously Natalie's already spoken to how proud she is of that and how she's become a better student since she's come to UCLA and, and what UCLA athletics has provided Natalie so she can optimize the, um, the educational experience at UCLA. And then, you know, I get to go to Natalie, not only Natalie, I get to go to her mom and say, mm -hmm. okay, uh, how do you want to impact the world through this platform and through this experience? And, uh, and then be able to have these incredible donors that say, yes, we don't just want wins and wins. We want on championships. We want 
these women to have a transformational experience. We want them to be able to have um, a great academic experience, a great growing experience, um, and of course, an excellent um, championship level experience. And so um, I, I just, I want to tell the donors, like, it's just so such a privilege for me to be able to offer this kind of thing to um, Natalie and her mom, and that wouldn't have happened without you all. So, you know, so, so Natalie, like, they, we decide that, okay, we're going to tell your story. And so, you know, Luke takes you to dinner, Karen, and they write this script, and it's all about you being able to live this dream out of yours, about sharing your story, inspiring others. And so what happens in the coming weeks? I mean, first when your mom comes, I think it was the Oregon weekend, right? Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. And Luke starts filming. So talk about what happened there, what started, how much fun you had, all the things that went into that weekend. Wow, it was amazing. Um, it was actually perfect timing that my mom, my mom had already planned on coming to LA to watch the the games for a couple of weekends um, and that's when we started filming and it was just perfect um so we got we shot a lot around the ucla campus and like in, in the gyms and then an amazing opportunity to go shoot in downtown la on a beautiful rooftop it was uh, we were there for a couple of hours so we got to see la and like the light and then also when uh, it was really dark and could see all the buildings and all the lights it was beautiful i've never seen downtown la like that um and mm -hmm. i loved it and um we also got the chance to come back home to dallas texas to shoot with my mom and my sister and i um for a couple of days and i mean just coming home i love home so it was such a treat for me to see my family and my dog <laughs> um but like <laughs> yeah but it just it was such a pleasure and luke and circle three productions makes um the whole the whole project like flow it was really easy it was really comfortable and i'm just so thankful mm. yeah. yeah and we you know she flew back she didn't miss any class don't anyone worry but she <laughs> flew back after the sunday game where we the overtime game where we beat oregon state she flies back to texas they film all day uh, Monday and flies back on Tuesday morning. She doesn't have class on Tuesday, on Mondays. So, um, so anyway, she comes back and uh, it's just, you know, we, it's, it gets made, we do the teaser and um, included with this video, we're gonna include the teaser as well as the full documentary that we send to the Bruin Elite as a thank you. Um, but the reality um, that is just, uh, it blows me away is uh, I don't know, it's just, it's sort of this uh, incredible turn of events. So this is all determined before the pandemic, right? We don't know anything that's gonna happen. So we do all of this filming. Um, we have these great discussions about how it's affecting you. Your mom, I can just tell her eyes light up when she got a chance to feel like, um, you know, her story was really being told. I'm gonna stop there actually, before I go on to the next piece. What was that like for you to watch your mom's reaction? I mean, my mom is such a rock star to me. And I feel like this documentary and this project has allowed her to like blossom into the mm. superstar that she is and for people to see that how amazing she is. Um, before like this project or anything, um, her and I would always like talk like, we don't have enough pictures with each other. Like we, there's no pictures of us. Like, with me being older um, in college and now, um, except like one or two, and we're like, we need to take more pictures. And then this documentary came out, this idea, and then I just, it like blew my mind because this documentary can be like, it's gonna be forever. And it's mm -hmm. something that I can show my kids and it's something that will be in our, my family forever. And it's just such a permanent thing that my mom and I can share it's just so special because right. I, I don't think I would have had this opportunity anywhere else. And I'm just so mm. thankful that I can share this with my mom. Mm. It's pretty cool. Okay, so now we have this big plan. We're going to release the documentary the day of the selection show for the NCAA tournament. We were going to release it with ESPN. We were going to release it with, uh, with the Pac-12 networks. And we thought we had all these plans. And we thought, oh, we were... At, then the pandemic comes and we think, oh my gosh, uh, the NCAA tournament gets canceled and we're sort of like, oh, bummer, we can't do the big splash with Natalie's documentary. 
but little did we know that uh, there was a lot coming. But um, <laughs> you, uh, you know, so you go home, and I'll never forget. Um, you know, I I'm out in my backyard, and I read this tweet that you put out, and I call you immediately, and you're out walking your dog in your neighborhood, and I say, Natalie, what happened? This tweet talked about how. Well, why don't you talk about that first tweet and what did you say and what happened? Yeah, so um, I, after everything went down with school and also the NCAA tournament, I went back home to Dallas, Texas. Um, and just, I had seen on Twitter and social media about the reaction to, um, to the coronavirus um, towards certain, to Asian Amer Asians around the world. Um, and I just see, saw that they were being like harassed. There are a lot of cases where people were being harassed and attacked physically, verbally. Um, and I knew that did not that did not sit right with me because it really close it hit really close to home. And then so I was at the airport, and I could just kind of sense just the difference, the the little the, just the vibes. You know, I I knew something was off um, when I was at the airport. I had my mask on. Just people were responding and looking at me differently, and I kind of knew what it was about. Um, and then when I came back home, I hung out with some friends before every, before like everything was shut down and social distancing was taken for ser really seriously. Um, and just an acquaintance of mine just said something really, just not really uh, respectful. It was just, it just came out and it, it really did not sit right with me. I didn't say anything at the time because it's my default to not say anything and just to walk away. And so that's what I did. But then after thinking about it a while and seeing all of these stories come up about Asians across the world being attacked, I felt like I needed to say something because of the platform I did have. And also I wasn't really seeing anyone else saying anything. So I felt like someone needed to say something. Mm -hmm. So I composed a tweet. I'm just about using the correct terms and just the correct rhetoric to um, describe the coronavirus mm -hmm. and just yeah well and yeah. the other part that you shared with me that day is you went to the grocery store and mm -hmm. you were walking through the grocery store and and you know you're in Plano Texas there's not a whole lot of um, Asian Americans right I mean we have a lot more of an Asian uh, background here in Southern California than we do in Plano Texas is that fair to say mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. so you're walking through the grocery store and people are sort of really looking at you derogatorily and you felt like actually you needed to wear your UCLA gear um, to almost protect yourself to say, to sort of like using the, the brand of UCLA to say, hey, no, um, this is who I am. But it wasn't because you were just proud, which I know you are proud, but um, it was because that you felt insecure about how you could be treated. And uh, is, is that accurate to um, say? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I would, I mean, wearing this UCLA, like it means so much to me personally. And, but I felt like it was for wearing this out um, during this pandemic. I felt like it was for my own mental, mental, like just yeah. sanity um, mm -hmm. to go out there and be like, because the first thing people will see, strangers will see like, I'm Chinese, like I'm Asian. And then they'll go directly to the coronavirus. And then they'll just have a lot of, well, in my opinion, I feel like They'll just have a lot of assumptions, assumptions mm -hmm. about me. But mm -hmm. I felt like if I wore all my UCLA gear, I was decked out in athletic gear, that people would form a different narrative about me. Like, oh, she's not just an Asian girl. You know, right. she's more than that. So that's, um, it was used as like a defense mechanism. For me. Right. So, yeah. Well, and then, so then on top of that, the other part about your tweet that really spoke to my heart is, um, you not only internalized it for how it affected your journey, but it, you automatically went to our conversations with your African American teammates and what they have to deal with on a day to day. And you didn't just go, hey, this is unfair to me right now. You said, oh my gosh, my teammates, uh, how can I love them better? How can I um, have a glimpse of walking in their shoes that they have to deal with this uh, you know, every day? And I was so impressed that you went there so quickly, that you, you, you processed your own journey and then translated it to wanting to love your teammates and understand your teammates better. But t talk about that and, and what hit you. Yeah, so I'm really close to a lot of my teammates and um, a lot of them are African-American. And so 
I just live, I live with three of my teammates and just spending time with them and seeing how they go through their daily lives off the basketball court. I just realized just the, not the barriers that they face that I don't, I've never had to think about. Mm -hmm. Um, And just, I, as an out, like an outsider, like it doesn't happen to me ever really. I know it's wrong. And I like, I just feel, I I feel for them. And then something like kind of happens to me with this coronavirus. And then I realized how strong and how just poised my teammates are to deal with this every single day. Um, For me, like when that happened, when this coronavirus and everything that's happened, uh, like happened to me, I was like, I was mad. I was, I wanted to like, I wanted to come back with something. And, but the way that my, teammates hold themselves and the way they fight back is just so like I just admire them so much for their Mm. response and it's just it's I've learned so much from them and it's crazy yeah yeah it's really cool how you did that so then uh you know I think that's it and I just want to make sure you're okay and you said yeah I'm okay I think that's going to be the end of it and then I I go outside I have my cup of coffee a couple days later and I open up the LA Times and in my backyard and there's Natalie and uh, and you start to tell your story there and I'm like oh my goodness and then I call you and you tell me a little bit about that and then um, I think it was like 24 hours later or maybe 48 hours later the ESPN radio national syndicate wants to have you on national radio and then um, a couple days after that, ESPN.com wants you to write an email on your own accord. And then, and so here we are, we did this documentary and then we're like, oh my goodness, here we go. And, um, and then a presidential, even a presidential candidate, a former presidential candidate mentions your tweet in the Washington Post, right? And mm-hmm. so, I mean, all these things happened in literally like a two week period. It's like you were, <laughs> I mean, you, you could have, uh, I don't know, you could have run for office at that time. <laughs> but um, so how, I mean, that was a frenzy and you're not exactly a stand in front of people kind of gal. So no. like what, what went on during that time from your perspective? And then we'll close it up sort of talking about how the documentary is about to be released. Yeah. Uh, I mean, thank you. I, I can't explain this enough. Thank you to you coach and also the whole staff and my teammates. They've been so supportive of, everything that's happened these past few weeks um yeah I'm not one to go out there and just talk and just like be out there and (laughs) cause all of this um attention yeah I know so it was really um it's really hard well not hard for me but it's just really definitely out of my comfort zone but that I have to attribute to just the development that I felt like just I've grown so much through the program I don't think at UCLA, I don't think I would have ever done it if I wasn't where I am today. Um, I would have been too scared. I would have cared too much about what people thought of me. I would be very scared to offend anyone else, and I just wouldn't want to stir the pot. But at UCLA, I mean, just the culture has taught me to, I am more than just a basketball player. It is my responsibility to be more than just a basketball player. And um, if I'm really passionate about something and I feel like something needs to be said, I should say something. And that's mm-hmm. just something that the program has really like equipped us and really put, like really supported us in. And mm-hmm. I just, I couldn't, yeah. Cause I wouldn't have ever no. said anything. Yeah. <laughs> no, And it's so, and, you know, I, we've gotten so many phone calls and actually one of the phone calls I got was from Mike Yam, who's one of the broadcasters, the main broadcasters for, uh, Pac-12 networks, and he's like, um, Corey, can you please give Natalie um, my cell phone number and that I'm available? He's actually also experienced some of what you've experienced, and I think you guys have been in contact since then, correct? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so yeah. now this, you know, I've, and this is happening, and so all of this is culminating to, um, I think, in not too long. I do know the exact date yet. We'll put, we'll get it out to everybody, but. Um, we're going to release the documentary with the Pac-12 media um, uh, on both on linear television, uh, both on hopefully ESPN.com as well as um, ESPN or uh, excuse me, digital platforms with the Pac-12 network. So here we didn't know how we were going to, how we were going to release this documentary. And then all of these things have happened, but um, you know, before we close it up, I just have, you know, what does I am woman mean to you? I mean, that's a phrase we throw around and you guys tease me as a coach all the time about saying it all way too much, I'm sure. But um, what does I am woman mean to you? And, uh, and, 
and why is it important that UCLA women's basketball continues to value that? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, well, before I came to UCLA, I viewed myself as just a basketball player. A lot of my value, my internal value, and I felt a lot of my external value came from how I performed on the court. Mm -hmm. And I mean, when I couldn't perform and if I didn't play well, like I was, I was injured um, my sophomore year. And when I couldn't play, I just, my whole world was just tossed and turned. Um, my emotions were up and down. My mood would be up and down because I put so much value um, in my performance and how people viewed me through the basketball lens. And mm -hmm. so, I mean, that's how I lived a lot of my life um, when I was younger. And yeah, so it was when I came to UCLA, um, just the perspective like I am woman and not like I am a basketball player. Like that just changed the whole way I viewed myself and how I viewed the world and people around me. Um, what do you I have mean, to write at the top of your What Went Well journal every day? Um, I, well, after every practice we write, my value does not come from who I am. But not Sorry. Oh my God. Yeah, try again. My value does not come from what I do, but who I am. Everything that happens to me today is an opportunity to learn and grow. Good job. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. No, oh, you're great. You're great. Okay. And, I, and I think, the, but I think sometimes it can, gets confused. Does that mean that basketball has become less important or have other things just been brought out? Oh, the, uh, other things have been brought up. But, I mean, basketball is really important to me but it's also allowed me to venture out all the opportunities that I've gotten from basketball and now I realize all of these opportunities and I really grab hold of them um, but before I would have never focused on any of that yeah well I you know Natalie thanks for hanging out with me and for sharing a little bit of your story um, what we're really trying to do um, our to our amazing donors um, you know and contributors is give you a really tangible vision of how you are affecting the student athlete experience and how you are contributing to the um, Natalie's life story really you know and I you know this is these are really challenging times um, we're isolated we're trying to invest in the women in different ways I mean even just from the glasses to the uh, fitness mm -hmm. equipment that we've been able to send them at home to the um, different ways, different speakers we're bringing in to help on our Zoom calls and team building. We had Steve Schembaum uh, help us on Friday night, which you guys all love and has been really mm -hmm. instrumental in our team culture. All of those things do not happen without the support of Bruin Elite. But this is something that most of you may not have known about. You may not have known that um, our ability to provide this life-changing experience for not only Natalie, but for her family um, and many, many Asian American kids that have been inspired um, would not have happened without your support and trust that you give us. And so um, we just really wanted to share this story with you. And um, along with this story, you, you should, should have gotten um, a link to the trailer as well as a sneak peek to the actual documentary um, that's going to be released soon. And we really just wanted to say thank you. Um, thank you to you for trusting us. Um, quite frankly, we're going to need you more than ever. Some people aren't going to be able to give as much. And we understand people, this pandemic has hit so many different people in so many different ways. And we have great compassion for that and empathy for that. And we're, we're just really grateful. That, um, but we're also going to need, if you can, continue to support us and maybe even increase um, we would really appreciate it because um, these kinds of experiences that we've listed, and this is just a small snapshot, don't happen without your, without your contribution. So we really, really appreciate your financial generosity, but maybe even more than that we, um, is the belief in this total collegiate experience that we're able to provide people like Natalie. Natalie, would there be anything you'd like to close with in terms of a thank you to our donors? I mean, I can't thank you enough, and I'm so appreciative for all of you. Uh, my life has been changed, and for the better, because of y'all and y'all's generosity. Um, nothing, my story, my mom's story, wouldn't have been able to be possible without your help, and it just means so much to me that people like you guys care about my life and how I'm, I'm doing in college, so um, I'm just so appreciative and so thankful. Well, it's perfect. Okay. Um, we got to end with an eight clap. <laughs>
Okay, hands in the air and one, one, two, two four, four, five, five, six, seven. No, oh, no, stop, yeah. stop, stop. See, you just have to do it. You have to do it because I we're, we have a delay, so it's off. Okay, so you got it. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You. C L A. U C L A. Five, five, five. There we go. All right, donors, Bruno Leap and uh, Natalie, thanks for spending a little bit of time, and I hope uh, you get a glimpse of how you're making a difference in our program. Thank you so much, and go Bruins.